Hey, it's Marilla Minnelli, and today I'm going to show you how to do a subtle money piece using a hair painting technique, along with some low lights to brighten up a natural redhead using all Kenra color. Now let's go ahead and get started. So this is my natural redhead, and if you know anything about natural redheads, is they tend to lose their vibrancy as you get older. So the hair color does change just like everybody else's. So what we're looking to do is just add in a little bit of subtle brightness to her natural shade, along with brightening her up with a money piece. But before we start, I am going to build my house before we paint. So I'm just trimming up her ends and just adding a little bit of shape before we get started. Now I'm going to pre-section her. So I decided to just use her natural part, which is right down the middle, and then from the apex down to behind the ear. And I'm gonna start in the back, taking a V parting section from the occipital right on down, just a couple inches at the center. As I mentioned, natural redheads tend to feel like their hair gets a little dull as they get older. So we're just looking to add in that little pop of vibrancy. So I'm using permanent 8C one-to-one -one with 30 volume developer. Now I decided to use 30 volume because I wanted at least one to two levels of lift. And I also wanted to add to the vibrancy with the copper shade. I could have easily used 10 or 20 volume, but I wanted to add to the vibrancy of this formula. So what I'm using here is my Freemar Dreamweaver comb. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love using this tool along with the Koo board. So this is going to basically give me that teasy light without the tease, making it a little rooted. I don't want that brightness showing right at the root area. So I do want a gradual natural shade going into this pop of copper. Now, if you don't have these tools, it's not an issue at all. What I would suggest is just taking a thin slice, weaving it, and then adding a tease to it, and then create that foliage hair painting effect. So again, just kind of making sure that you have it teased a little bit because that's what's gonna help diffuse that line. And then using that upward stroking motion to help blend it into that natural hair. Now, furthermore, for this sectioning, I am now going to take a horizontal section and I'm going to continue to use this pattern in the entire back section. So what this does is provide these triangular background pieces that's going to help provide the background depth that I'm looking for. And one little added suggestion if, is if you're working with this long of hair is to use the rolled foils that you can basically pre-cut to the length that you need. But if you don't have those like how I don't have those for this video, I am just using regular pop-up foils and simply adding length to it by lifting up that hair and placing the foil right underneath. As long as you have a little bit of product on the foil, it actually helps the hair stick to the foil itself. So that's just a little added tip. If you want it to stick and create that length, simply just add on that product to the foil and I promise you it will stick and be perfect. This technique is actually very versatile. So something to keep in mind is that I'm only using about nine to 10 foils throughout this entire back section. So you can actually use the seam technique with a lightener application instead of the permanent dye. Or you could even use this application method for a natural brunette that just kind of wants to warm up their overall look. What I love about this technique is that it is completely customizable to your client's needs. So use this application as inspiration and something that we're gonna do to further customize this is because she wants to have that lived in look. We're actually gonna add in a little few pieces of hair painting throughout her entire head. So overall, we're brightening up her canvas to look like her natural redheaded younger self, but with those little pops of blonde in between. Once I'm done applying the 10 foils throughout the back, I'm gonna to move towards the front and further section right at her temple area or at the arch of the eyebrow. 
And here I'm gonna further section for that natural money piece and just clip it away for now. And I'm simply gonna add in just two foils on this side section going diagonal back, still using the same highlighting method with my comb and coup board. For the front section, I am stroking up my color a little higher and closer to that hairline, but it's still going to look pretty rooted. If I were to take this color all the way to that new growth area, it's actually going to look more unnatural. And again, the overall look here is to make it look as natural as possible. We don't want any pops of brightness poking through that new growth area. So you can see that all of the pops of copper color that we're adding in as a highlight low light is actually living in the interior of the hair. And this is what makes it look so natural. I'm actually gonna do the same application on the other side as well. And then once I'm done with these side sections, I'm gonna work on that top section. And keep in mind, I'm leaving her natural center part. So I'm still going to take those diagonal back sections, creating like a slight V on the very, very top, but leaving that money piece out. I'm adding in just three foils for this top side section, making this a total front application of just 10 foils of 8C. These are all applied in the same exact fashion using the Dreamweaver comb with the Koo board. But keep in mind, if you want more pops of these copper lowlights, you can add more foils. So the choice is completely yours in determining how much pop of color you're looking for. Basically, the more spread out they are, the more natural it's going to look, and the more closer together they are, the more brighter of an end result you're gonna have. Now to customize this project, I'm using Kenra Professional Clay Lightener at a one-to-one -one mixing ratio with 30 volume developer, so we can enhance this natural redhead with a natural face frame. So the way that I'm gonna do that is, again, separate that bottom from the top section. And my only focus is to pay attention to hair painting that front hairline. So I'm gonna focus on hair painting that mid zone, which is where it starts to kind of get dark. And I'm not so concerned with lightening up her ends so much. And I want to keep this still really natural and rooted. So I'm not too focused about going up too high. However, I am hair painting both sides of my sections. And the reason for that is because depending on how she wears her hair, whether it's for facing forward or away from her face, I want that added pop of blonde to really show through. So an added tip is to make sure that you saturate that mid zone and then just kind of bring that lightener more closer towards that hairline. So feathering and flicking right on up. A little added tip when you're doing hair painting is make sure that the hair is held nice and taut and you're using the flat part on the side of the brush to stroke up your product. Now I am using foils just to have a little placeholder so that way that lightener is not touching her skin and face. And then now I'm just grabbing random pieces of hair, hairs that are just naturally kind of clumping together and further hand selecting and hair painting just on those mids and ends. I just want that natural little pop of blonde. And now I'm just gonna let her sit in process for about 30 minutes room temperature, no heat is applied or added with this application. Now we're going to get ready for her toner. So I'm gonna be mixing up 9GG equal parts to 8CC and just a ribbon of beige rapid toner. So what this is going to do is give me that really beautiful gold copper light reflection, but also give me just a little swig of control using that beige rapid toner for this copper shade. So when she's done processing, I shampooed her and then applied my toner formula from roots to ends and then processed her for about 15 minutes right at the bowl. When she was done processing, I used Kenra Professional Lux Shampoo and Conditioner and made sure to let that conditioner really soak in as I detangled her hair. I then finished up her styling with blow dry spray and perfect blowout and gave her a really gorgeous voluminous blowout because she does have natural texture and wave to her hair. And then I used silkening heat cream 
right onto her dry hair and then added these really gorgeous large barrel curls to her overall style. And what I love about Silkening Heat Cream is that it is a cream that gives me thermal protection with no hold. So this is a very versatile cream that you can use for flat ironing or large curls such as this. And then I finished her up with some spray clay for added texture and pieciness. And I'm absolutely obsessed with how this technique turned out. And I hope you like it. And here's the final result of this subtle money piece using a hair painting technique on a natural redhead using all Kenra color. Now, just to give you a little recap, I went in with Kenra color permanent 8C one to one mixing ratio with 30 volume developer. So you get a nice lift and brightness out of my permanent dye. And then I mix Kenra clay lightener at a one to one mixing ratio with 30 volume developer and painted on that subtle money piece along with some random hair painted pieces throughout her entire head and then processed her for 30 minutes. Once she was done processing, I used Lux shampoo and conditioner. And then for her final style, I used blow dry spray and perfect blowout and then layered in silkening heat cream for her curls. And then for that added texture, I used spray clay. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel. And I will see you next time.